VLAN trunking protocol where switch 1 will be the primary so we are running VTP version 3 a switch 1 will be the primary server which is which can only make changes a switch 2 is only server but still it cannot make any changes a switch 3 and 4 is acted as a client so in this topology uh, here if I go for switch 1 and we'll see that show VTP status show the command is show VTP status so this is running as a primary server <coughs> the, this switch primary ID the MAC number is this which is equal to your device ID okay so and since it is a primary server show VLAN and it's on revision number is 2 in this topology I have configured VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 and this one VLAN 10 and 20 so right now there is no member is associated similarly if I go for switch number 3 and 4 so show VLAN so I have VLAN 10 and 20 but this is running with VTP client mode show VTP status so running with VTP client domain name is Cisco revision number is 2 and your uh, current version is version number 3 all topologies converge in this topology you can see the primary ID meaning the ID of your primary VTP server so once you do this now the next section is uh, the link which is going towards user side that should be configured with appropriate VLAN member meaning access port so for switch one perspective uh, this host is the member of VLAN 10 so I will go for switch one so right now you can see all this member is the member of default port uh, sorry default VLAN which is gig 0 and 1 and in this topology gig 1 is the member of VLAN 10 so go to switch 1 and then global mode interface gig 0 slash 1 switch port access VLAN 10 even though I am running this show interface gig 1 slash 0 switch port now this is the member of VLAN 10 which is we can see with the help of uh, where uh, access mode is VLAN 1 or what I did here did I say show run interface gig 0 slash 1 okay, so I'm running this this is also as a trunk port which is I do not want is it really is gig 1 slash 0 okay it is gig 1 slash 0 it's my mistake gig 1 slash 0 so here I will not say this gig 0 slash 1 no switch port access VLAN 10 and I want to see this do show run interface gig 0 slash 1 this is only as a trunk port then say interface gig 1 slash 0 switch port access VLAN 10 then do show interface gig1 slash 0 then switch port this is the member of VLAN 10 because access mode is VLAN 10 but you can see negotiation of trunking is on this meaning DTP is still running in the in the back back end and the best practice is always disable dynamic trunking protocol in order to avoid uh, the switch spoofing attack this is where the second command you have switch port mode access so configure access port explicitly with the help of this command the moment you configure this and once again you will see status now you can see negotiation of trunking is off that means DTP is off and that is having with the help of command 
uh, configuring the static access. So administrative mode meaning static access, operational mode is also static access. That means administratively, by the administrator, the port is explicitly configured as access port. Colon and phone devices can connect. Yes. Okay, so similarly I will do the same thing for all the rest of the switches. So in this topology, and this is the member of, again, gig slash 2 is the member of VLAN 10, gig slash 2. Go to switch 4, show VLAN. Right now, I have the VLAN ID, but all this member is the member of default VLAN. So in this topology, gig slash 2 is the member of VLAN 10. So go to this interface gig slash 2 switch port mode access this is recommended command returning of DTP and switch port access VLAN then if I using the command show VLAN here so now we'll see that gig number 2 is the member of VLAN 10 there is also one more useful command show interface status which is like this status sorry and I will say gig number 2 is the member of VLAN 10 but this two port is the trunk port gig 0 and gig 1 which is correct in this topology continue with next so switch number 3 this gig 0 slash 1 is the member of VLAN 20 so switch 3 gig 1 right now once again all port is the member of VLAN 1 so here I will say interface gig 0 slash 1 okay gig 0 slash 1 in switch number 3 switch port mode access and switch port access VLAN 20 correct same thing I'll do on switch number 2 so gig 1 slash 0 interface gig 1 slash 0 switch port mode access and switch port access VLAN 20 in this design now members belongs to VLAN 10 can communicate with each other but members belongs to different VLAN is not because they are separating broadcast domain if I go for router number 5 and try to ping this IP which is 10.10.8 so here if I go to out of 5 so here local IP is 10.10.10.5 and if I go to router number 8 this is also the member of VLAN, same VLAN, member of VLAN 10. But this one is configured with IP address. Show IP interface brief. This is configured with IP address 10.10.8. So from here, if I ping to 10.10.10.5, I should have communication. But if I want to ping to, let's say, here, a VLAN 20 is using 20 so 20.7 20 from the R8 10.10.20.7 they will not able to communicate because the, that is the member of different broadcast domain different VLAN so this way uh, we have done the VTP VLAN configuration okay and next uh, I will go with before to do inter VLAN communication next we'll, uh, we'll check spanning tree instances for this VLAN so for this purpose if I go to switch 1 and we'll see show spanning tree for VLAN 10 this will let me know the, uh, the spanning tree instance information for VLAN 10 and by default in this switch if it is running this is running with RSTP. So some switch model is running RSTP by default. If the switch is not running with 
the spanning tree mode pbst this is the default mode in classical switch so here you will see show span vlan 10 when you see this ieee that means it is a default pbst plus in cisco switches but here i my plan is to run rapid pbst this is rstp the rapid pbst is the recommended mode so in all the switches rapid pbst is going on the show span vlan 10 you can see this is running now see the earlier whole port is in the blocking state which is discarding in rapid spanning tree and the role is designated so waiting to converge now it is going in the learning state from learning to forwarding a link cost is 4 because these are the gigabit interfaces forwarding so since this is the uh, this will say I am the root bridge for VLAN VLAN 10 okay so this ID bridge ID is the local switch information bridge ID column is is indicating lo local bridge information so you can see default bridge priority is 32768 plus system ID meaning VLAN ID that's why you can see in total your bridge priority is 32778 so first we will make the comparison of this value versus then it will look for the MAC address so since this which have the lowest MAC address in this topology for VLAN 10 or for all uh, VLAN and this is the root bridge for all VLAN so in this case it will be the root bridge for VLAN 20 as well root bridge the root bridge for VLAN 20 so in this scenario you already configured PCP and then on the primary server you are setting switch point protocol uh, primary server and you already configured this I'm saying in this scenario we finish configuring the VTP, VTP. and then on the primary server you are configuring SDP as well no not primary server this spanning tree is running on all the switches VTP oh, is a different story, spanning tree is a different story. Yes, but with VTP, once you implement a protocol on the primary server, it's the same for all the servers. Once you implement it, primary server 4. And then it shows the same configuration to all the servers. Yeah, so all is getting the same configuration. So the job of VTP to announcement of VLAN ID only. Only VLAN ID. Yeah, VLAN announcement of VLAN ID. Okay. So, so I have in my primary switch I have VLAN 10, 20, 30. It is going to be advertised those three VLAN in all the switches in my VTP domain. Only job of VTP. There is nothing concerned with spanning tree. Well, in this case, you started defining. You want you are showing spanning tree protocol and then changing the protocol. But this configuration is you've already done VTP. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, actually we did a VTP yesterday. Yeah, yes. But like you see, uh, RSTP was running by default. So what he demonstrated was a what if your switch by default is running STP, but RSTP is desirable. Uh, That's what I'm that. saying. So mm -hmm. in this scenario, yeah, VTP is already there. It's already there. there, and then STP is already running. The STP is yeah. running by default. Yeah. So STP is, is running by default. I just wanted to be clear that the two technology no. can be on the same. Two technology have different uh, different funct function. Yes. Yes. I just wanted to be clear that the two were run. Yeah. That is totally. Yeah. We uh, did a VTP yesterday. Yeah. Independent. Yeah. Totally independent. <coughs> okay. So now, see in this example, switch one is the root bridge for all VLAN. Yes. So then, that means you can see here. If, if you look for topology for switch 4 perspective one port will be block and other side will be the root port in this case this will be the root port because it is connecting with yeah. root bridge and this will be the block port yeah. because the second alternate path so go to switch 4 and look for show spanning tree VLAN 10 gig 1 is the root port 
okay and gig 0 0 is block port so gig 1 is the root port which is connected with root bridge that is taking the shortest path and gig 0 0 is alternate because it is running as uh, RSTP it also have alternate it is a block status is this is my role this is my status blocking which is discarding in other words for rapid spanning tree perspective okay other than uh, root and alternate whatever the other link is available that will be that all is act as a designate port so this is the link facing towards user side so for this particular switch this is where if you intend to implement your loop guard then you can implement on a correct in this case i can implement my loop guard on both of these port yeah yeah, zero, zero and zero. yeah, yeah. on gig zero zero and gig zero slash one so in this example since this is the block port i mean gig zero zero is block port for all vlan now gig zero zero is block port for all vlan that means when somebody sending traffic from this side traffic is going through this way out for vlan 10 perspective and for vlan 20 perspective traffic is going through this way traffic is not going through this way and this way because this port is block but if you want that for vlan 20 user i want to utilize this link okay and for vlan 10 user i want to utilize this link so this is where i can change the uh, root bridge roles so here i want for the switch one you will be the you remain as a root bridge for vlan 10 but with my manual configured bridge priority default is 32768 i'm setting here i can set the value is minimum preferred one is zero and this is the incremental of 4096 so here i'm saying zero spanning tree for vlan 20 I cannot set here 1, you can see allowed values are only the incremental of 4096. So here the second best is 4096. Same thing I will do on switch 2 side. So global mode, spanning tree, VLAN 10, this is the secondary 4, VLAN 10. Priority 4096 Spanning tree for VLAN 10 But this VLAN 20 This is I want to make uh, Root bridge for VLAN 20 So now once it will be converge If I go to switch 4 Earlier we have seen Gig port Is the block for all VLAN Now In this example gig 0 will be the root for root port for vlan 20 which is i can see here with the help of command show spanning tree vlan 20 so now gig 0 is root port but gig 1 is block but gig 1 is my root port for vlan 10 show spanning tree vlan 10 so this port gig1 gig1 is the root port for vlan 10 so this way you're doing now vlan load balancing or utilizing all the uplink same situation for this switch 3 perspective so for switch 3 perspective this is the root port for vlan 10 and that one is the root port for vlan 20 so if I go to switch number 3, show spanning tree for VLAN 10, gig slash 2 is the root port, which is this interface, gig slash 2, but gig 00, zero is block, but for VLAN 20, show spanning tree VLAN 20 
gig 00 is root port here gig 00 is this one this is connecting to switch 2 right next is once you do this now I want to implement my STP toolkit the default behavior is here so if I go to uh, switch 3 perspective let's say and I'll go back to router number 5 and switch 1 perspective show IP interface brief and ping to 10.10.10.8 10 10 with the high speed count let's say this number you can you're sending traffic right you can see what will happen without port fast feature so switch one and I will shut down gig one slash zero link is shut and no shut because spanning tree is running now your this user will wait at least for 30 seconds before it can resend the user traffic support is moving now blocking to listening uh, in case of a rapid spanning tree it's again taking 30 seconds for because uh, for the rapid spanning tree perspective end user for end user perspective it is again taking the forwarding delay uh, is also included so that's why you also need port fast need to be configured for rapid spanning tree protocol also and slightly here the command will be different what which is I mentioned on the board so you can see after 30 seconds it will once again will start sending traffic approximately 30 seconds 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and assuming that I have done here something is not happening so this okay. it's something is happens with which one CPU hog Spanning three four VLAN ten. And what was the port? It was in learning state. Now it is in forwarding state. And which one is in forwarding state? I have which one I okay now it start communication. Communication start with the slightly as something has happened with the CPU but well, you can say this is taking long delay without at least 30 seconds uh, without a port fast feature but well, here go back to this the CPU is tracing back it is going in a dispute state the spanning tree is is creating a problem here so what I will do let me uh, assuming that the configuration is saved here now let me make test on this side switch 3 perspective so go with uh, this 7 7 to 6 7 to 6 6 ping 10 dot 10 dot 20.6 it is pinging and ping 10.10.26.7 10 
six repeat is this time what I will do I will apply the port fast feature where on switch number three and it is applicable for these access port so go to switch number three global mode so by default if I see do show span interface which is gig zero slash one gig zero slash one and detail you can see by default since this is the designate port so gig one this is the local number which is unconfigurable to the value uh, this is my physical link De this is designate forwarding path uh, port path cost is 4 default port priority is 128 this is the port ID combination of port priority plus port local port number designated route has priority 20 this is the bridge priority of root bridge with the address is this is the MAC address of root bridge and designated bridge has priority this is the default local one with the addresses this is the local MAC address designate port ID cost is 4 and here we can see that link type is shared because this is ethernet is at it's acting as ethernet BPDU is sending with every two seconds so this since this is a designate port it is only sending BPDU and this counter is increased with every two seconds it is not receiving BPDU designate port is only sending BPDU out so here what I will do spanning tree port fast and this is I have to be say edge port here edge meaning link connecting to a user and then I will say default now what I'm doing I'm going to be enabling port fast on all my access port the command is spanning tree port fast edge default if I once again will see this so now I can see this port is in the port fast edge mode by default port fast edge mode by default the result will be uh, I will take this uh, the convergence later on so second second what I want here I can see this is running sending VPD out at the rate of every two seconds but I do not want to send this so I'm implementing BPDU filter the spanning tree which is which is once again in conjunction with port fast for the edge port applicable for only for edge and BPDU filter BPDU filter and I will say default I will say default so now what will happen if I say clear spanning tree interface clear spanning tree counter and show spanning tree for interface which is gig 0 slash 1 and detail this is this is you can say earlier initially it will send 11 BPDU packet so 6 just to double check if somebody is listening for me so initially it will send 11 packet and then it will start sending VPDU out so it's stuck in now 11 so advantage of VPDU filter now there is no more VPDU sending this out yeah the so third one you have VPDU guard 
So right now this port is configured with port fast and VPD filter also and port fast also. The third one you have VPD spanning free. This is also in conjunction with VPD guard. This is for edge port. BPDU guard default. Now this port is also configured with VPDU guard. So you have VPDU guard, you have VPDU filter, and you have also port fast. Now if, if I take uh, if I what I will do for the VPDU guard, VPDU guard says if I receive the VPDU. So it will uh, make the port in error disabled state. So first if I go to uh, to simulate this, if I go to router number 7, which is this one, not 7, it's 7, yeah it's 7, and also saying I have some problems, no problem. Okay, so here I will say bridge protocol bridge bridge let's say bridge uh, it was bridge 20 protocol let's say IEEE just I'm running spanning tree to simulate and go to the interface F00 F00 and bridge group 20 it will try to converge so do show span this is as we executing IEEE compatible protocols and we are the root we are trying to become the root and if it able to send VPDU and on the other side you can see it is taking action VPDU guard is receiving VPDU port on on this interface configured. Result is do show interface status now. Port will go into the error disable state. This is error disable. And even if I remove now the port, if I go to this, I will say no bridge group 20 removing so this is not participating now in the spanning tree because there is no link is participating in spanning tree the so show run interface f00 this link is now removed from the bridge capability but it will still you will see the port will remain in the error disabled state it will be remain in error disabled state now solve to solve this type of problem I can do the manual recovery and there is also the automatic recovery automatic recovery is need to be configured and what will happens with that automatic recovery within a certain time limit it will try to recover uh, the bring the link in upstate automatically and this is I can do with the help of error disable recovery feature error disable recovery and I will say for all possible cause by default with every five minute the port will try to recover from this but you can also tune your timer error which is error disable recovery interval so by default interval is 5 minutes which is 300 seconds you can also set at minimum let's say in this case I'm setting 30 seconds so after 30 seconds it will try to recover from this error disable state and if there is a continuous attack it will recover and will shut down
show error disable recovery this is enabled for all these time interval is 30 seconds time left ah because it is uh, it will take that uh, the old time to 20 seconds okay so it will take this time to recover from this but if you want to do this manually then you have to give the command shut and no shutdown so shut this link and no shutdown so gig 0 slash 1 it is not switch number 3 gig 0 slash 1 say shut down and no shutdown then see do show do show interface status so now the link is connected so because port fast is also enabled here so send this traffic once again to destination 6 go to switch number 3 shut this link no shut it will take immediately will reconverge one packet loss this is the advantage of port fast feature and four so in this examples loop guard is applicable for this and this link for root port and block port what do you think for this perspective the, which port should be the block port out of these two link let's say for VLAN 10 perspective because this is the root bridge for VLAN 10 so which port will be the block port in this switch for VLAN 10 what are you expecting block port which should be the block port it is simple based on rule number 3 lowest center port ID this is the root port this will be the block gig 0 slash 1 so rule number 1 path cost which is equal sender now compare this is the sender sending the same the third one is you have lowest center port ID which is 0 and 1 so this is this will be root port that is your block so go to switch number two and show spanning tree for VLAN 10. Gig 1 is block. Gig 0, 0 is root. So this way election is happening. And here we can say let us assume that uh, this is the let us assume this is the block port for VLAN 10. Okay, gig 00. So go to switch number 3 and show spanning tree. Show spanning tree. Sorry, do show. Do show spanning tree for VLAN 10 gig 2 uh, sorry gig 0 is block port which is this one so what I will do I will enable the loop guard here yeah. on gig 0 0 in switch number 3 interface gig 0 0 this is on a per interface basis and will say spanning tree guard so what I want I want loop spanning tree guard loop so now show spanning tree for VLAN 10 so far no problem to simulate this I will go to this link and enable the BPD filter on per interface basis that means neither I'm sending nor I'm receiving 
So go to switch two interface gig zero slash two. Interface gig zero slash two. I will say spanning tree BPDU filter enable. So result is switch number three. You can see this is because it is a rapid spanning tree. Three hello miss. The port will go into the loop in consistent state this is the loop in consistent state and it is blocking now but now if I go to go back to this and will say no to this command it is automatically recover no to this go back to this it is unblocking and now it is once again will go into the alternate state so this is your spanning tree uh, enhancement toolkit okay so that is all about VLAN VTP and spanning tree and for inter VLAN communication now suppose uh, this VLAN then want to communicate with VLAN 20 so what I need, I need to be configure multiple SVI here because switch is now layer 3 capable so I can configure multiple SVI and those SVI will act as a gateway for these respective VLAN user. So I will go to 6 and 8 to implementing this. So 6 is the member of VLAN 20, 8 is the member of VLAN 10. So go to uh, switch number two here, and I will say VLAN number VLAN. This is the SVI four VLAN ten IP address ten dot ten dot ten dot. Let's say two five four. This will be the gateway. No shutdown. Make sure you doing this command and the second SBI interface VLAN interface VLAN 20 no shutdown best practice always and in this case you need it then dot 10 dot 20 dot 254 this will be the gateway for VLAN 20 because routing is enabled here what is the command you have IP routing simply if it is not enabled you need to be apply this command IP IP routing this will enable the routing feature and we can see this show IP route you can see these two route is connected now so if I go to router number 6 right now it is the member of VLAN 20 so go to 6 so need to be mentioned need to be know the so show IP interface brief this is VLAN 20 user so I need to be set only IP default gateway here which is 10 dot 10 dot 20 dot 254 and on the other side I also need to be set gateway on router 8 side this is the member of VLAN 10 so it need IP default gateway VLAN uh, what 20. 20 dot 2.5 not 20 uh -huh. it is 10 10.254 okay. 10. so from here now I want to confirm can I ping this gateway first it can ping gateway now I want to keep confirm can I ping to <laughs> other side second gateway of the VLAN 20 I can also ping 10.10.20.6 so you are you're also getting a reply from 20.6 so there is an end to end reachability so after 8 is configured with IP address 10.10.10.8 if I go to router number 6 here and pinging to 10.10.10. .10 .10 .10 .10 .10 .10 .10 
tape it is getting a reply so this way you can configure uh, inter VLAN communication once uh, the switch you know that that is the layer 3 capable so in this case switch 1 and 2 is act as a distribution layer switch even though there is also the services maybe there is a services like firewall and load balancer you can connect on this distribution layer switch and access layer is only connecting endpoints like IP phone PC and access point is connected with your access layer okay so that is all about your uh, the switch core section now you left with ether channel so first you take a lunch break can okay, lunch break and then we go with ether channel understand what is the negotiable protocols we have and how to configure this ether channel in the same topology and 